Hello everyone, Nika here with your Daily Neuro Nugget. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. I hope you're ready for the weekend, ready to de-stress, decompress. That way we can re-energize ourselves and come back full steam to this case because we need so much brain power. We know there's so much crazy stuff going on. And I'm going to be honest with you, yesterday was the very first day that I've actually gotten a threat like a real threat pertaining to this case. So what do we do when we get a threat? We, we cheer. So water for me. Why do we cheer? I think when I've been threatened in my other channels as well, when you're getting very close to the truth, it's, normal to get these threats. It might mean we are actually closer to the truth than people want to admit. So give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and you're already here. You might as well subscribe. Why not? Why not? Right? Now, today's topic is a very touchy one because it involves a very un-American way of thinking. And you guys understand, I've mentioned this a thousand times, I have family in all over. FBI, DEA, CIA, I was prior military, my parents, uh, my father was prior military. All these interesting things, right? Um, all my family members basically have been involved in some government agency or another. Now I understand how things work and I understand it's seen as patriotic to do these things. I myself, I joined the military because I consider myself a patriotic person and I wanted to actually serve my country. Now, it is difficult for me to talk about this stuff as well because I am patriotic. This is why we need to talk about these things because if there is something wrong with the system, if there is any possibility of LE being involved, directly or indirectly in this crime, we need to get to the bottom of this because having law enforcement doing horrible things or covering up even something as the Idaho 4, that is unpatriotic. That is un-American. If you agree, leave a comment down below. I think it is essential we keep tabs. Remember, these government servants work for us. When I was military, I put my life on the line. When you sign that contract, you are giving your life up to your country for your people. Therefore, Moscow LE needs to be held accountable as such. They work for us. So today we're going to talk about Officer Nathaniel Rosendahl because there is so much stuff and I'm just gonna be blunt. He's creepy, he's creepy AF. And if you can't see that and I can't make you see that, then so be it. But he is not the first creep in Moscow PD. If you wanna learn more about other creepy police officers in Moscow PD, go watch my other videos because I have shown a very bright light on all their illegal activity where they have abused power, ab abused that badge to take advantage of even minors. It's disgusting. Something needs to happen in Moscow. And I know this is not just a Moscow issue. This is a state-wide issue. This is a country-wide issue. It is happening all over the country. So we need to be even more stern and really pay attention so we can really hold these police departments accountable. Now, again, we don't know if Moscow PD was involved or was not, but we need to at least entertain the possibility of them being involved because the track record for Moscow PD is a horrible one, by far the worst one I have yet to see. And I live downtown Chicago. I live downtown Chicago, which is high criminal, high police corruption. Moscow, Idaho is worse so far. It's worse, which is horrifying. Such a small town. Now, why 
Do I think that there was some involvement? Again, these are my speculations, my theories. Let me know what your theories are. I found something very interesting. I'm pulling it up here. 6623, it is a stipulation for protective order. It says, records from the University of Idaho pertaining to other individuals, including students, faculty, and staff, and records from the University of Idaho's Office of Civil Rights Investigation, the OCRI. Now, this protective order pertains to records obtained from the Univer University of Idaho. These records fall into two categories, records pertaining to Madison, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zena, records from the University of Idaho pertaining to other individuals, including students, faculty, and staff, and records from the University of Idaho's Office of Civil Rights Investigation, the OCRI, the OCRI. Why aren't people talking about this? Maybe that's why I keep getting threats now because I'm talking about everything, but it's so important that we do. The OCRI website, if you go and check it out, it actually provides students resources so that they're able to submit a formal complaint. So a written complaint, hopefully that means that there's some sort of record kept. We don't know for how long, but the formal complaints in this OCR website are having to do with discrimination and sexual harassment. Now, this protective order for the OCRI is so telling in my opinion. Why? Because to me, that just shows that it is so clear that there are records within the university pertaining to one or more of the victims. And these records are having to do with sexual harassment or discrimination. Is it possible that maybe this involved a certain law enforcement officer? Because let's be real, let's be honest, we have all seen how Moscow Police Department loves to turn off their cameras, their body cams at the perfect time. We understand that they love to try to get rid of evidence like they did in the sticker case. We understand that they love to hide information. We understand that they love to make certain footage disappear as the Brent Kopaka case, which is a whole other mess going on in Idaho. I'll eventually touch on that. Now, I also noticed that these Moscow police body cams show one officer in particular, right? Who continues to show up at 1122 King Road. Sometimes there's actually no complaint to respond to, but he still shows up. So who is this officer? This is the same officer, Nathaniel Rosendahl, the creepy guy that I keep talking about, the guy that happened to take a picture of Kaylee's ID. I've talked to friends who are police officers. Apparently this varies depending on the state, the, the town, I still think it's unprofessional. I understand that it is convenient maybe if they don't want to write anything down, if they're being lazy, but I guess it's legal in some places. So I'm just going to try to mentally set that aside because that's something that kind of bugged me at the beginning. So I also find it very interesting that Officer Rosendahl is the one that's coincidentally parked feet away feet away from 1122 King Road while the crime is taking place. What was Officer Rosendahl doing there? And let's not forget, Officer Rosendahl was taking off the directory for the whole year of 2023. But now he's magically back on it again? Why was he taking off for a whole year? I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that he was being investigated, probably for his very creepy behavior. Now, Let's go back so that we can refresh our memories on this creepy behavior. And let me know, do you think it's creepy? Because I'm gonna tell you what I would do if he had done that to me. I know how I would react because again, I have been harassed in the past.
we first see Nathaniel Rosendahl showing up at 1122 King Road where the, where the victims lived. First thing that catches my attention is that he's saying 1122. He doesn't even say the name of the street. Why isn't he saying King or Queen Road? Is it because that is likely gonna go on record and he doesn't want to seem like a creep? That there may be a record kept saying, hmm, why does Officer Rosendahl keep going to 1122 King Road? So is it possible that he only said 1122 to cover his own behind? Maybe, we don't know. He supposedly shows up for noise complaint. It's literally the middle of the day, it's sunny out, it doesn't seem that loud, as we can see in the body cam. Officer Rosendahl doesn't even bother to go to the front of the house. He goes right directly to the back of the house where Kaylee comes out. So to me, it seems like he has been there before. He seems very comfortable. He seems that he knows where he's going because it would not be any officer's first reaction to enter the house from the back. So I'm pretty sure he had been there before. Now, I also found it interesting that Hunter came out with Kaylee and he's just kind of on standby sitting on the side while the officer's talking to Kaylee. Is it possible that maybe Kaylee wanted Hunter there? Maybe she felt uneasy because although I am not a body language analyst, it is my opinion that Kaylee looks very uncomfortable. I kind of see her semi rolling her eyes like really this guy again, ew, yuck. I would be uncomfortable too, right? You would kind of be semi rolling your eyes, especially if the officer is so unprofessional as to tell you, I'd rather you spend that $300 on beer and then threatens you, I'd hate to come back here. Because to me, that's kind of a threat. I'm gonna take that as a threat. Now, the other video is even creepier because we see the young men walking through the field at 3 a.m. and it sounds a lot like Officer Rosendahl. I am 99.99999% sure that it was him. What does he say in this video? Oh, we're doing alcohol enforcement. Hey, come here, hey, come here. That's the first thing he says as he's shining a bright light on these young men walking through the field. The boys continue to go and he again yells out. <laughs> and then the kids, the guys, the grown men, actually, they're not kids. What do they say? They say, oh, I thought it was a fake person. How many fake people are walking around in Moscow, Idaho? A fake person? To me, that sounds like these young adults are used to fake people walking around. What do they mean by fake people? Are they possibly referring to undercover cops? You let me know. What do you think these young adults meant by fake people? They go on to ask Officer Rosendahl if he was undercover. And he says, no, we were downgraded. Were they actually downgraded or was he in an unofficial vehicle? Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think? Now, this was by far the most disturbing because to hear an officer say, if I yell at you to come talk to me, even though I'm in plain clothes, you probably should go that route. Excuse me, Officer Nathaniel Rosendahl, are you effing serious right now? Because you know what I'm going to do if I hear you yelling at me while I'm crossing a field at three in the morning in the dark, shining a light on me and you're in civilian clothes in an unmarked vehicle, an unofficial vehicle, and you're shining your light on me, I'm going to freaking take off sprinting because I think you're a crazy person, a drunk person, or you're going to hurt me maybe. Now, if after I take off sprinting, you come chasing after me, you know what I would do? I would pull out my concealed carry and utilize it. This is why it is so essential for undercover cops or cops that are, are not maybe on duty. Was he even on duty that day or is he just out there hanging out like a weirdo? We don't know, right? We don't know. 
that's why it's essential for them to identify themselves. Show me your badge. Give me your badge number. Give me your name. I need to be able to see you. And why are you not in uniform, sir? Why? What were you doing out there? It just gives me the freaking creeps. Like, is that normal behavior to you? What would you do if you were in the situation of those young adults? Because that appears as Officer Rosendahl likes to harass young people. To me, when I see the Kaylee and Officer Rosendahl video, I get the vibe that he's kind of harassing her. Same with the, with the Banfield boys. I get the sense that he's harassing them. And that he is just expecting them to just give in again to power. Why? Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm not wearing clothing or in an unmarked vehicle. You listen to me. That is the worst advice I've ever heard. Because now you are teaching these kids to expose themselves to potential danger in the future. Plus, fake people apparently love to walk around Moscow, Idaho at 3 a.m. But he was so close. Rosendahl was so close to the crime scene at 3 a.m. What was he doing there? What was he doing there? I don't know. I have a feeling that the reason that he was taking off the roster for a whole year was because he was maybe under investigation. Not only that, but... There are so many pictures. If you search well enough, you will find pictures of Moscow police officers with college students and their friends. That is so unprofessional. Even if they are trying to supposedly bond with the community, we've never seen those pictures on their Facebook page, have we? All the pictures we've seen of Moscow Police Department with these college students are in other Facebooks or in other Instagram accounts, often owned by college students. Why are they hanging out with college students? I don't care if you are close in age, it's still unprofessional in my opinion, because you're out there to protect these young people. You're probably interacting with them quite often, especially if you're having to do these alcohol enforcements or having to show up to their homes for these noise complaints. So, to me, it is not so far-fetched that maybe a certain young officer was stalking a certain young lady that likely had no interest in him. And that found him creepy. And that maybe could have potentially filed a report for stalking her. And that maybe a certain officer had to take this whole case into his hands and fix the issue even if officer rosendahl had no involvement directly or indirectly the fact that there is body cam footage of him just being unprofessional is disturbing it's something that should be addressed whether it is necessary to retrain all Moscow Police Department, retrain all the officers in how to interact with young, attractive people or young men, then, then it must be done. Because Moscow, Moscow PD is just a mess. It's a hot mess right now. And again, I hope that if you live in Moscow, you have never had to had any of these interactions with the police officers there because it seems to me like they don't really care about the community. But they're just looking out to cover their own behinds and to protect the university as their main source of income. So crazy video. Again, I wish I had all the time in the world so that we could really dive down deep. Maybe one of these weekends, I mean, I might be able to set some time aside and we could maybe do a live. I don't know. I've never done a live stream yet, but it might be something interesting, right? So let me know down in the comments, what do you think about Nathaniel Rosendahl? I am ashamed, honestly, to call him Officer Rosendahl. I don't think he deserves the, the officer, the officer badge. I really don't. And have you guys watched that video of Officer Rosendahl 
um, saving the kitty. Look at the timestamps on that. For some reason, when I type it in in Google, I cannot find that video, but go to Yahoo. Let me know. Do you think there's anything weird about the timestamps? Because if I recall correctly, Nathaniel Rosendahl is allegedly saving a kitty for Moscow PD, but I don't think he was listed as working for Moscow PD yet. So look at the timestamps. Let me know what you think. Let me know. Do you find him creepy? Do you think there was maybe something going on with Kaylee and him? Or do you think maybe he could have been infatuated with Kaylee? Does it appear to you that he was harassing those boys at the field? Do you think the timestamps are weird? Do you think him being so close to the house, 1122 King Road, during the crime, or right before the crime, we don't know what time the crime took place. Was it a three? Was it a four? Timelines have been shifted all over the place. These are things we must question. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Let me know down in the comments. Are you interested in a live stream? Maybe we can all figure this out together. So have a wonderful day. Take care and... Oh, and thank you for the super stickers. I didn't know that was a thing. So it's, it's so cool. Um, probably treat myself to like... Thai food today. Thai food sounds good. So you guys have a wonderful night.